it snapped. Yeah. Right then, obviously you've seen the damage. Um, and I've just decided before I before I take it off the trailer, I was just gonna have a quick play. Um, this chassis leg had moved again in the impact, but not as much as it did on the previous one. Um, so I've just had a quick play. Basically, I took the move this out of the way. Got a big bar in here, up the chassis leg and just pulled it. And I think I've got it back into place. The way I'm gauging it is, so this mount here, you can see the witness mark of where the, the washer was after the accident. So obviously I paint marked all the bolts and that um, before we went down. And this washer was actually, you, know, you can't quite see because um, I've moved it. But it was a bit further over and there was quite a big gap between where this paint mark ended and where it ended up on the washer. But now I've moved it back, it lines up again. Um, as in, you can see where obviously the paint stroke has gone straight from the mount to the washer and then obviously it's around here in the bolt, but the bolt's loose just now. Um, so I think, and also, uh, this time I can actually get a spanner onto that there. Um, after the accident with that car, this bit here was away over here. It was completely covered in that bolt. It was almost touching the, the dipstick. But I can actually still get a spanner on that bolt. So I think, I'm thinking this, this section here um, is maybe still a bit twisted. I'll need to see if I can find a way to try and maybe twist that back. But I think the chassis leg itself is actually okay. Um, I thought when I put it on the trailer the subframe was maybe bent, but I'm not entirely convinced it is. I think I've just... Um, so the, the track rod end, the, the steering arm, which you can just see there behind the drive shaft, um, that broke in the accident, so I put a spare one on and I just quickly just threw it on and I think if I, if I wind it in just a bit more, I think the wheels might actually point straight then. Um, so I'm going to do that now, see if it'll roll the trail, trail a little bit easier because just now it is a bit, it's got like 18 mil a toe in just now so. Um, well, I think you can see that wheel's pretty much dead straight. And this wheel's still a wee bit toe in, but I think I can fix that just with the, the steering arm. So I'm going to try that now. See how I get on, get it off the trailer. And then uh, I'll tell you what the plan is. So today's job has been trying to make this look a little less crashed. Um, so I've managed to swap this scuttle, tra uh, scuttle tray thing, this wing, is it a wing? Maybe a wing. Uh, this wing, scuttle tray and the door from the previous shell. Um, and I think you'll agree it actually does look a little less crashed. Uh, compared to what it was before um, So that's pretty decent. It seems to be all lining up um, Not too bad We've almost got the stickers lined up as well um, Obviously these came from the same car, so that's lined up, but it's almost lined up with that um, but Obviously that's getting changed anyway um, So I've managed to take this bit of trim off here. Um, 
this came off in the crash. I'm going to try a bit of heat and take these side trims off and then I'm going to try and take this window out um, hole because if I can get if I can get this window out it obviously saves us on stickers um, and then it makes it easier for swapping this uh, swapping this quarter So we think we've cut everything and it should just lift away. Woo! Right, this is going to be a lot easier than I thought because the panel actually joins here for the factory and along here. So that, and I found a spot whilst I'm here, so that's going to make it a lot easier. Yeah. Good morning. You join me in the middle of quite a long trip. I've just done this journey here. Um, and I'm actually just in a car park just outside Carlisle uh, just now. And I've been picking up some parts. Uh, I'll spin this round. Here's the inside of the van. Here's the bed. Um, and I've been picking up some parts. So we have a brand new fiberglass bonnet. Uh, massive thanks to uh, CCF, Robert CCF Fiberglass for getting this sorted really quickly for us. Um, so the other one was cracked and small, oh, not exactly smashed, but cracked quite badly in the crash. So Rob made us a new one. Um, I also went down to a breakers just near Cross Circuit in Darlington. Um, picked up some front panels and we've got some in the garage at the back we've got some um, wishbones and uh, trim plastics and stuff like that so I picked all that up from them and then also a big shout out to uh, Blueprint Racing um, in our shower we have some red bumpers because that's obviously where they live in the shower um, so yeah, uh, we have most, if not all, of the parts now to fix up the car. Um, ignore my dirty washing. Um, so yeah, it's been quite a long, a long trip. Yesterday was 500 and something miles. I don't. Yeah, yesterday was 500 and something miles, um, and today is about a 400 mile journey back home, I've already done half of that, I'm only about, about 200 non miles from home now, um, so quite a long trip. Uh, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you again once I drop all this stuff off at the, at the shed. So what I've done is I've marked out the new bonnet with um, masking tape and measured stuff and all that kind of jazz. Um, and then I've put the old bonnet on top of the new bonnet to see if my marks kind of line up and it looks like it looks like they do on all four sections so I'm thinking I just go for it I'm thinking I just go for it I don't think any movement that way in the so like with this one for example I don't think much movement in that kind of direction would really matter at all because obviously you just rotate the pin a little bit. I think it's more a case of just getting it just getting it roughly to where it needs to be. I have slightly or to try and move this one slightly further down 
because we had a massive gap up here between the bonnet and the scuttle. So I think I've moved it slightly further down. So hopefully we'll have a slightly better fit. I don't think I'll need to adjust any of the other pins to do that because they just literally needed to move like a couple of mil up the way. Um, so yeah. If I do this. Yeah. So you can see the new bonnet with all the markings on it. So yeah, I think I think I'm just gonna go for it and put. Yeah, wish me luck. Right, that's all the holes cut. Uh, I've placed a bonnet on the car. There's only a couple of the pins in because some of them snapped in the accident and this one got a bit bent. So um, everything seems to be lining up. Reasonable enough so far. Uh, it doesn't look too bad actually. So, yeah. Uh, thankfully, this time the bonnet will be getting painted by a professional, um, which is not me. So that's fine. So at least that's all the holes cut and everything. So now uh, Emma's going to drop it off at the body shop, get them to paint it and I will crack on with fixing that. Right, just to finish this uh, this video off, I thought I'd have a play with the rear bumper. We did have a dent in here. It's st still a little bit uh, dented, but I actually managed to push it out by hand. Um, I didn't film it because I didn't actually think it would work, but literally just pushed it and it came out and I'm hoping I put that there I think, oh lost it hoping this just clips back into here uh, I'm going to need another pair of hands or oh, another hand, sorry, so two seconds right, it seems to be clipped in as far as it'll go. So now, turn that over. That just doesn't look too bad, there's still a wee bit of a crease there, but there's not much I can do about that really. Right, one last thing before we go. Um, I know it's a bit of a cliche for people on YouTube, but um, remember to like, comment, subscribe, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, we're so, so close to 400 subs. Um, and it's kind of, we've been nearly there for such a long time now, it's kind of, it's a bit frustrating. We just want to get to that 400, but I think we're at 392 just now, so just eight people. Eight people is all we need. Um, and also, if you're feeling very generous, um, we have, we've had a set up for a while actually, but we've got a, a, a buy me a coffee. Um, I don't expect anyone to do it. Um, you know, there's no, obviously, we're nowhere near big enough to put anything behind a paywall or anything like that. It's just, you know, if anybody's feeling generous at all, um, you like what we're doing, um, and obviously it's getting a little bit expensive now. Um, we do have a buy me a coffee. Um, any money you put in will go straight back into the car, and also we'll put your name up on the screen saying thank you. Um, yeah, that's it for me. Um, subscribe, get us to 400, and um, look out for the next video as well because we'll have something a little bit different, a little bit special. Um, so yeah, we'll see you then. This is a special little bonus footage thing for um, someone that asked a question. Trevor5372, I think you literally just asked a question today and I thought I'd just do this. So you're asking about wires to cut out, what you can cut out. Um, basically there's, when you take the dash out, you'll see that there's, the loom basically splits into three, goes down the centre of the car and down either side. Uh, down the centre, you've got a whole host of um, twisted pairs that come to here 
which is a box for the um, a, not the airbags. Um, so literally everything from there can go. Um, all you need to keep are these wires here for the cigarette layer if you want to keep that. If you don't want to keep that you can get rid of them as well. Um, the only thing I wouldn't make sure of that is um, on this spur that comes off you've also got there's a plug for the heater unit plug for this bit here um, it's a three or four pin plug I can't remember um, you want to make sure you keep that but everything else on this um, middle spur can basically go the ones down the sides again it's all um, airbag wiring we've taken away so there's You'll see there that little white thing, which I still need to take out of that. Um, there's another one up here as well, which I have actually taken out. The wiring for those, I think it's all yellow yellow wiring or brown wiring, can't remember. Um, but basically, all that can go. Uh, we also had wiring under the seats. Um, I don't know if they all have them, but we had wiring under the seats. Driver's side had all the stuff for... Um, sat nav and all that kind of stuff as well but winding for the seats all that can get split back and go and basically i just took it as far back as i could within the loom behind the dash um which is about here ish where it all goes into one ball took it as far back as that cut it all off uh insulated it all and just taped it all up um you still have quite a lot of wiring but what you do take out, I literally just threw it all out yesterday um, actually took it to the skip but what you do take out is quite a lot so yeah, I hope that helps, I thought it was better than writing it in a comment reply um, but thanks very much for your comment and good luck with the track build